Hey guys, today we're gonna to talk about resonant wavelengths and frequencies with the tube open on both ends. I just did a video with a tube closed on one end and open on another. If you need some tips on that, I'll leave a card right up here that you can check out that video before going to this one. You don't necessarily need that one before this one, but it'll maybe help you understand a couple of the things that are going and how they're very, very different from one another. It's a very, very big detail if there is a closed end on a tube or if there is two open ends on a tube when it comes to these resonant wavelengths and frequencies and the formulas that we're gonna to derive to solve for things like length, wavelength, speed, frequency, et cetera. Now, one thing that we did learn with the open end is for a resonant frequency to happen, there has to be an antinode at the opening of a tube. All right, so the one major difference with the closed end, I had a fixed node here and an antinode here for the first fundamental frequency. Here, that's not gonna be the case. If I look dead smack in the middle, this is where my node is gonna be on the tube for the first N number or the fundamental harmonic resonant number. So if I start to draw this wave now, even though I don't have a closed end, I can still establish a standing wave inside this tube. So the resonance is gonna happen when I have one node and two antinodes on either side of the tube. And that tube, guys, is still gonna have L, which it has the entire time, even with the closed end. Now, this is the lowest possible resonant number. So this is gonna be the fundamental frequency. So that's gonna be when N is equal to one, and this is also known the harmonic slash resonant number and the reason being for the standing wave to happen i have to have an antinode at both sides and that's going to have that's the smallest it could be i can't have with an open tube on both ends just one antinode i have to have two so this is the smallest one i'll be able to see later in different harmonic numbers having an antinode on each side and there'll be multiple nodes i'll show you that in one second but this is the smallest one and we've seen with the other videos, with the smallest possible one, I have to establish how many wavelengths are here in this total L. And if a total wave, guys, is 360 degrees, I see that I'm pretty much going from up here down to here, right? This is the picture that we see. And that's gonna be equal to one half of a wavelength. So when N equals one, I know that the length of the tube is going to be equal to that resonant number one times one half of a wavelength. Or just simplified, L is one half of a wavelength. This is the first derivation we're gonna look at and it's kind of the jumping off point for all of the other things that we want to find. We can now rearrange this to say at the fundamental frequency, wavelength is going to be equal to 2L. And because on our reference table, we know that the velocity of a wave is frequency times wavelength, we know that frequency is gonna be V over wavelength. So then the frequency for this first harmonic, or this harmonic frequency, is gonna be equal to V over 2L. And this is the strategy that we're gonna to use to derive these three major formulas for every single resonant number that we could possibly have. But now the first one could be a little misleading because this n equals one, so it tends to go away. To be honest, there's a hidden n right here, which would drop down here, and then would be also put out in front of here. And we'll see that number become more prevalent on the second harmonic number for this wave. So let's derive these three formulas for the second harmonic number. Okay, so here is what a second harmonic looks like, where once again, I have an A at both sides, that is a requirement, and also I'm gonna have another A here. And how did I know that this was the second one? Well, if we look, our picture that we just had was really this. That was the picture that we just had, and this was N equal to one. So if I now double that, I drew that same picture again, this is n equal to two. 
So unlike a closed end tube where the ends only happen on odd integers, in an open end on both sides, we can have n be any integer. It can be even as well as odd because our n is a factor of one half of a wavelength. So our second harmonic is going to be two one half of a wavelength. So now I can call this n equals 2, 2 harmonics, which is 2 factors of L equals 2 of the 1 half wavelengths necessary for resonance to happen. Okay, with 2 n's, resonance needs to happen this way. So this right here is really the n number. So if I simplify this, I can say that L is equal to 2 over 2 lambda. Therefore, L is just equal to lambda. And we would see that this would be one full wave. This looks like a cosine wave. So that becomes really easy to solve for lambda once again, which is just L. And then it becomes very easy to solve for frequency, which is just going to be V over L. Okay, so now let's look at the relationship and see if we can figure out what a formula might be for every single one. So in that n equals 1, we saw that L equaled 1 half of a wavelength. Therefore, the wavelength equaled 2L, and the frequency equaled V over 2L. Now in the second one right here, we had L equal to 2 times a half of a wavelength. And then we have wavelength equal to 2 over 2 wavelength, and then we had F equaled V over L. So how can we come up with an expression for any harmonic or resonant frequency that we might have? So for any N, we can say that L is equal to N times 1 half of a wavelength, right? N times 1 half of a wavelength. We can then also say from this derivation that the wavelength must be equal to 2 times L, right? I multiply both sides by 2, divided by N, all right? So you saw I did that. So, And you're seeing that all we really need to do is know how to solve for this first L. As long as we can compare L to wavelength, we can derive all of these guys. You don't have to memorize all three. All you have to know is how can I find the first one, which is how many half of a wavelengths do I have? Then for any single n, I know that the frequency is going to be equal to n times v over 2l. And how did I do that? Well, frequency equals v over lambda. So I took this lambda down here, 2l over n divided by V, so the N comes back to the top right here, and the 2L stays in the denominator right here. So this is how we solve for the resonant wavelength and the resonant frequency of any sound wave inside any tube at given L. And I can, to know the frequency, I must also know the speed of that wave. Sometimes I'm going to give you the frequency and ask you to solve for the V. But like I said, this seems like a lot to memorize, especially when you throw in the tube with the closed end. But really all you have to do is understand how does this L compare to the amount of wavelengths that we have. And just start with N1 and know that this is a half of a wave and know that for every N continuously, I just have to multiply by one half of a wavelength. And then all it is is rearranging formulas. Let's take a quick look at an example. So in this example, it says a standing wave is created in a column of air inside a tube that is open on both ends. The wave is traveling at 340 meters per second, and the length of the tube is a quarter of a meter. What is the fundamental frequency of the wave? All right, so here's a little bit of vocabulary here. We must remember that fundamental frequency is when n equals 1, or the first possible resonant standing wave inside the wave. All right, so if I draw a picture of my tube, I know that for resonance to happen, I need to have 
an A at the end of the open end. Now, if this was a closed one, I'd have a node here and I'd have an anti-node here and that would be N1. But this is open on both ends, guys. So this is, in waves, it's so important that we read the questions. I know they can get wordy, but these are details that are super critical because now I have an A on both ends. So the simplest form would be two A's with a node in between them. Okay, so here's a rough sketch of exactly what that wave will look like inside for the smallest possible resonant frequency N1. All right, and then guys, I really discourage trying to memorize the relationships for these. I mean, keep practicing until you get it right, but then practice just a little bit more till you can't get it wrong. Understand how these formulas are made and that will leave up so much room for other things that you have to memorize. So let's say in this L now, how many wavelengths do we have for the wave? So we start here and we come down and we end here. Now a full cosine wave starting up here would be this. So this is one half of a wavelength. So right now we have one half of a wavelength. So then a wavelength is gonna be equal to 2L. And we were given the length of the tube. So then wavelength is just equal to two times 0.25 meters. So the wavelength of the wave is 0.5 meters. Now from our reference table, V equals frequency times wavelength. I was given this as 340 meters per second. And I just found this to be 0.5 meters. So the frequency of this wave is just gonna be V over lambda, 340 meters per second divided by 0.5 meters. So the fundamental frequency, meaning when N is equal to one, is just gonna be 680 hertz. And guys, just an, a quick like added bonus here, every single resonant frequency after this is just gonna be a multiple of this frequency. So if I had the exact same tube, right, for the next overtone, n equals two, I would say for frequency two would just be two times 680. All right, so that'd be a quick way to solve. Once you know that fundamental frequency, like maybe they'd give you that in the, in the problem, they would say the fundamental frequency is, that would mean for any n number or for any resonant number above that, all you'd have to do is multiply this by that n. And remember guys, a closed end can only have odds. So if you see a two here and it's a closed end tube, you know you did something wrong. But guys, this isn't hard physics. You can do the math, the math is easy. The hard part is drawing this. Getting this right is the hardest part. Once you do this, you can get to here, I promise. So if you have any other questions about tubes, open end, closed end, guys, leave them in the comments below. Please give the video a thumbs up if you guys appreciated this content and I'll catch you on the next video.